Check, 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 and a one, two, three. Welcome to the Effortless English Show with the world's number one English teacher, A.J. Hogue, where A.J.'s more than 40 million students worldwide finally learn English once and for all without the boring textbooks, classrooms, and grammar drills. Here's A.J. with a quick piece to help you learn to speak fluent English effortlessly. Get better jobs. International opportunities. Travel. Make international friends. Speak English fluently. Speak English confidently. Speak English effortlessly with Effortless English. Join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. That's my website, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. You can try the VIP program. Just $1 to try it. You can also get my other courses, Power English, Business English, Conversations, Pronunciation Course. English gives you an advantage, right? I've had so many members tell me that they got better jobs in the same company where they work or in uh, a new company because of English. One second, I'm going to close my door. It's noisy. Okay, sorry, my kids are making lots of noise. <laughs> All right, um, where was I? Okay, VIP program, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Today's topic, how to change your life, how to change your life when your life is not going well, when you feel depressed, when you feel sad, when you feel hopeless, when you feel overwhelmed. When you feel your life is a failure, right? when you are down, how do you change? It's, uh, you know, if you're, if you're happy and energetic and enthusiastic and super motivated, then maybe changing seems easy or continue because you're already succeeding it's easier to just continue succeeding <laughs> right <laughs> but uh what about when you're not right this is the really challenge is when you're feeling depressed and sad your emotions are down this is where we start to feel helpless sometimes and it feels like change is impossible sometimes it feels like improving succeeding in some part of life Oh, it's just impossible. It's too much. I'll never do it. Well, that's our topic today. We're doing continuing our book club, Tony Robbins. Notes from a Friend is the book. Tony Robbins, Notes from a Friend. And today is chapter one, How to Change Your Life. So let's jump in. I will talk about the topic first. And then we'll go to live questions and comments. So here we go. Let me just I'll put my... If you're watching on video, you can see it on the screen. There we go. Oh, change cameras. Okay. Let me just move something on my screen here. Here we go. Feeling overwhelmed. How to turn it around. So this is chapter one. Tony Robbins' book, Notes from a Friend. Feeling overwhelmed, how to turn it around. So overwhelmed is means uh, too much. It's a feeling too much, right? And it's kind of in a negative way. <clears throat> it means you feel like your problems, you have too many problems, too many difficulties. I'm overwhelmed. I can't handle it. I don't know what to do. I'm, it's too much. I, 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 I can't succeed. I can't change. It's too much. That's, that's, that's feeling overwhelmed. How to turn it around, right? Turn it around means go a different direction. So you feel overwhelmed. You feel like your life is terrible now or not good now. How do you change that? Turn it around completely. Completely change it. Okay, so that's our topic of this. Let's go into it now. So the chapter begins. He said, often in life, events occur that we truly cannot control. So this is a good point number one. 
because I think sometimes with self-help books and self-help, um, uh, I don't know, videos in positive thinking, they ignore this fact <laughs> that it's true. There are many, many, many things in the world we cannot control. Bad things happen. They happen in our personal life and they happen in, you know, just the world in general, right? So that's true. There's a lot of things we can't control. So bad things can happen. And we cannot stop them. That's absolutely true. It's a tough truth, right? So he gives some examples. Maybe the company we're working for downsizes and we get laid off. This word downsize means they're, they, they're cut employees, right? They're trying to cut their expenses. So they fire people, basically. But they don't fire them because they're bad workers. They fire them just to save money. And sometimes that happens. That happens to a lot of people. You know, they you have people have jobs they think they're safe the job is safe and then they get suddenly the company cuts them you can't control that uh, another one our spouse leaves us our spouse is husband or wife sometimes that happens of course there can be causes but sometimes maybe you are a very good wife or a very good husband but your spouse leaves anyway Maybe they're not so good. <laughs> they're not loyal or whatever reason. And sometimes you, you can't stop somebody. If they want to leave, they will leave. So this is also very, very hard. It's depressing. A family member becomes ill, becomes sick, or someone close to us dies. And this has happened to me in the last year. And I think it's going to be happening to a lot of people soon. Um... Obviously, if this has happened to you already, then you know it's very, very, very hard indeed. Again, out of our control. And so he just kind of, and he keeps listing a few more. So sometimes these things happen. We can't control them. And they are very, very tough. Very, very hard to deal with. And this is just the, a truth of life. Okay, and then he gives another example. And this is probably, this one is very common. He says, maybe you had the experience of trying everything you knew to get a job or to help a family member or to find your soulmate, right? To find a husband or wife or just feel happier, but nothing seemed to work. When we try a new approach, we try our best, but we still fail to reach our goal, often we are afraid to try again. This is a really important statement because this is so, so common. I think there are two things that are common. One, people who never try anything. They're so afraid to fail, they never try. That's maybe the biggest group. <laughs> and then the next biggest group is like this. It's people who try one time. They try something new. They try a different strategy. They try a different method one time, but they fail. And then they're afraid to try again. So one failure and they say, oh, I'm not doing that again. Right? And he says, why do people do this? Because nobody likes pain. Nobody wants to fail again. It's painful to fail. Nobody wants to try really hard and then be disappointed. And he says, if you have, if you have, if this happens to you a, a few times, more than one time, then it's easy to become disappointed and stop trying, right? Sometimes people might try three, four, five, six times to do something, to achieve something, to, to have some success or change, and they fail, they fail, they fail, they fail, and then they just quit trying. And this is called learned helplessness. It's you believe that you are helpless. You believe you are powerless. There's nothing I can do. I cannot succeed in this area of my life. I'm helpless. You learn this. He says, the good news is you're wrong. You're wrong. You're not helpless. You can succeed. You absolutely can. So next he talks about this very important thing. This is a very common Tony Robbins uh, phrase. He's got these little phrases. You know, they're easy to remember. And this is one he says all the time. And it's, it's very true. Your past does not equal your future. Your past is not your future. 
Your past does not equal your future. It doesn't matter in the past. Maybe in the past you were weak, 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 physically weak. I mean, like you can't lift. You're very skinny and no muscles and you're very, very, very weak. Right? Maybe your whole childhood, your whole life until now. Does that mean your future you must also be weak? No, it does not. You can get stronger. You can. Your future can be very different than your past. This is important to remember because we get stuck. We focus too much on our past and we think that automatically, well, I've always been weak, so that means I will be weak in the future too. Right? But it's, that's not true. I've always been poor, so I will be poor in the future too. It's not true. I've always been unhappy. That means in the future I'll be unhappy too. Not true. Past does not equal your future. Persistent. Oh, sorry. Oh. Next page. Persistence pays. Many people tell me, this I'm reading from the book. Many people tell me, I have tried millions of ways to succeed and nothing works. Or I've tried thousands of ways. He says, but think about it. Probably they have not even tried hundreds of ways. Most people have tried maybe eight, nine, or ten ways to make a change. And when they fail, they quit. And let's, I think Tony's being uh, optimistic. I think most people don't even try eight times. <laughs> I think most people try one or two times at most. And if they don't succeed, they quit. And I've done it too in different areas of my life. I've tried once or twice and then I just, ah, it's not working. So we all do this, I think. But he says, the key to success is to decide what's most important to you and then take massive action each day to make it better. So this is the simple formula. Massive action each day. So both those things are important. Massive means big, big, big action. A lot of action, right? So not just thinking, not just dreaming. You have to do. You have to do things. And then, oh, one second. <laughs> Excuse me. Spring, there's some allergies. In <laughs> All right. Um, and the second part is each day. Each day means every day, every single day. So it's not enough to take a lot of action one day and then do nothing the next day. You have to do it every single day. A lot of action, a lot of action, a lot of action every day, every day. Next, he tells the story of Colonel Sanders, kind of famous story. Colonel Sanders is the guy who um, founded KFC, Kentucky Fried Chicken, which is now a big international company, owned by Pepsi actually now, but anyway. But Colonel Sanders was uh, fairly old when he started this, or when he grew the company. I don't know when he started it, but when he really grew the company and made it into a very big big successful company and became rich he was 65 years old right and that's that's quite different most people most entrepreneurs if you look at most people who become very rich and build a big business yeah they usually do it when they're much younger 30s and 40s maybe right they start but he was 65 so already quite different and he was kind of broke so he asked what could i do that would be valuable to other people and he said, I have a great chicken recipe. So he went around trying to sell his chicken recipe, trying to build this company. Uh, and he tried, he said, so according to this story, he was refused 1,009 times before he heard his first yes. So a thou over 1,000 rejections. He was trying to sell Right, his idea, his formula, his uh, his recipe for chicken, and uh, a thousand people said no. That's persistence. So, what's the point of the story? The point of the story is that you know someone finally said yes, and he became very successful and very rich. But the point is, how many people would continue without quitting after a thousand times? hearing no, 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 right? Most of us 
would quit after maybe 10 times, <laughs> right? A few people might do 100, but almost nobody would keep going after hearing no 1,000 times. That's a huge amount of rejection. And what this shows is that Colonel Sanders was super persistent. Persistent means you keep going, you keep trying, you keep trying, you never quit. You never, it doesn't matter. Fail, 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 fail. You keep going, you keep trying, you keep trying, you keep trying. And persistence is a superpower for sure. Persistence, many people will succeed s simply because of persistence. <laughs> even though they're not so smart, even though they're not the best, at something there's they don't have the best skill but just because they they refuse to quit and they will just keep going and going and going and going and going and going and going until they succeed and this is uh, very powerful it's not easy though but it's powerful next tony talks about um how you need to see your problem. So how do you develop this persistence? How do you not quit? How do you not become overwhelmed? How do you not become depressed when something in your life is not good? He says, one thing you need is what we call perspective in, in English. It means you need to realize whatever problem you have, any problem you have, it does not affect your entire life. Right. In most cases, there might be a few exceptions to this, but um, he says no problem is permanent. No problem affects my entire life. This too shall pass if I continue to take massive, positive, constructive action. So this is a belief he created for himself. Now there might be a few exceptions to this, you know, in terms of like physical uh, physical problems or disabilities or something where I think clearly they can be permanent. But um, but even then, uh, we have some pretty amazing stories of people who have had these are some very serious physical problems, but they still have lived a great life, you know, that they, they always have the problem, the disability, but they learned to make, you know, so for example, someone cannot walk and they're in a wheelchair, right? They're paralyzed. So, yeah, then maybe they never will walk again. This could be permanent, but they still manage to, um, you know, they get their wheelchair and they start exercising and maybe they do races, wheelchair, wheelchair races, or maybe they, they focus on their mind more and they do amazing things, you know, with their mind and working with more, you know, more mental work or whatever, right? They, they find they can still have great, amazing lives, in other words, and be great, amazing people. That's his point. So, he says, number one, you should focus on gratitude. If you have a problem now, and most of us do not have that serious level of problem, right? Like, for example, most of us are healthy physically, right? Most of us can walk. Most of us are not in wheelchairs. We, should, we forget that that's an amazing, wonderful thing. That's an amazing, wonderful thing. We forget to be grateful for our health until we don't have it, right? We forget to be grateful that we do have a body that's working, that uh, we can get up and walk and run. Some people can't. And uh, we forget that we have, we may have, you know, several people in our lives that are, that love us and care about us. You know, maybe you don't have a girlfriend or a boyfriend or a husband or a wife, but you might have a parent, a mom or a dad or a brother or a sister or a cousin or friends who care about you and you care about them. You're not totally, completely alone. We forget to be grateful for those people because we it's too easy to focus on the problems. I'm poor. Oh, I don't have any money. It does. It's, it's no fun to be poor and not have money, but we should not focus on the problem only. We have to remember... There are also a lot of great things happening in our lives, a lot of great, wonderful, beautiful things in our lives. And step one is to be very grateful for what we do have. Maybe you don't have money. Maybe your financial life is terrible, but be grateful for the other things. Right? Or maybe your health is not good, but your financial life is good. Right? So we don't ignore the problems. We don't pretend they're not there. Of course, they're difficult and they're real, but... 
don't forget to also also be grateful for what we have already. And then step two, focus on the solutions. You've got this is how you stay persistent. Don't keep complaining about the problem and just focusing, oh, I'm poor, I'm poor, I'm poor. Yes, you're poor. You only need to say it one time. Okay, you acknowledge, you accept the truth of the problem. Then all your energy needs to focus on solutions. You don't say, why am I poor? That's focusing on the problem. You say, how can I make more money? How can I become rich? How can I be financially independent? How can I be financially free? How can I improve my financial situation? All of these are better questions. All of these questions focus on a solution, making things better. This will change your mind to something more positive. And then you just have to take action. It's not enough just to ask the questions. You think of an idea and you try it. And you think of another idea and you try it. And you keep going. Another thing he talks about is you have to understand lag time. Lag time, that when you get frustrated, and this is hard to do, but it's important. You, when you, t you take action, don't expect quick results. Don't expect immediate improvement or results because there's a lag time. It means there's a delay, a delay in anything, right? If you start investing now, saving your money now, you won't be a millionaire tomorrow, right? <laughs> it's not going to happen. It's going to take time. In fact, for the first couple of years, maybe you feel like not much is happening. Uh, if you're trying to lose weight, lose fat, get in better shape, be healthier, be stronger, it won't happen in one day. <coughs> it won't happen in one week. In fact, if you go work out, you go to the gym and you work out hard or you go outside and run hard, the next day, you'll probably feel worse. <laughs> the next day, immediately, you'll feel worse. You're going to feel tired. Your muscles are going to hurt because you're not used to it. So you know, in the short term, you actually, it can feel like things are getting worse. So you, you have to remember this and keep going. And he, he uses the example of planting seeds, like growing corn, growing rice, growing anything, right? You plant the seeds, they don't grow immediately in one day. It takes time. You got to keep, they need sunlight and water and right, and it takes time, but eventually they do. So you've got to plant the seeds and then you need some faith. You have some faith that I planted the seeds, I'm watering them, they're getting sunlight, they're going to grow. They will eventually grow, right? So it's the same thing. If you're trying to get healthier, you start exercising. Let's say you just start jogging. You jog, and the next day you feel tired and your muscles hurt. You go for a walk. Then the next day you jog again, and you just keep jogging, keep jogging, and you think, okay, nothing's happening, same weight, nothing's happening yet, but you have to have faith and keep going. Because then after one month or two months or three months or five months, you will start to see those results. It's the seeds need time to grow. The seeds are your actions. Every time you take action, it's like planting another seed, planting another seed, planting another seed, and watering them and giving them sunlight. And then you've, but you've got to have the faith that this eventually will work. This, that's what keeps the persistence going, that faith. So he says, my message, this is the end of the chapter, he says, my message to you is simple. And in your heart, you know it's true massive, right? Massive means a huge amount, a lot. Massive, consistent action. Consistent means you do it every day. Massive, consistent action with pure persistence. Persistence, you don't quit. And a sense of flexibility in pursuing your goals will ultimately, will finally give you what you want. But you must abandon, you must get rid of any idea that there is no solution. So you must not be helpless. You must get rid of this idea. This, oh, it's helpless. There's no chance. Wrong. So you need massive action. You got to do massive action every day. And he, he mentions there in there a little flexibility. It means... If you're trying something, trying something, trying something, and after a while it's still not working, then you need to maybe just change your methods a little bit. Don't quit. Just change what you're doing, like some of you. 
You, maybe you studied grammar, study grammar, memorizing grammar rules, and that was your focus in school for English. And then finally you realize, this is not really working. I still can't speak. So then you f start to do other things. Maybe you find effortless English. You start focusing on reading and on listening more and chatting with people and like real world English. And then you get results. All right. So all in all, a very nice chapter. All right, let's get into our comments and questions live. Okay. We have Vladislav. Vladislav says, Hawking, talking about Stephen Hawking. <laughs> which it's also a position in jiu-jitsu. <laughs> um, most of his life was in a wheelchair from his 20s to his 70s, but he managed to become a great famous physicist. Studied black holes. Exactly. He focused on what he was good at. That's a nice uh, point, too. Focus on what you're good at. So, so often we focus on what we're not good at and kind of cry about it and complain about it. Uh, you know, we focus on our weaknesses instead of focusing on our strong points and developing them. And uh, that's a really good point. So if Hawking, Stephen Hawking could have just complained his whole life that he, I'll never be a marathon runner for example, <laughs> right? Like, I'll never be a marathon runner. I'll never be a great athlete. I'll never, I can't ever play basketball. I can't play soccer. He could have just focused and complained about that his whole life and done nothing and just been depressed, right? I mean, all those things w are true, would have been true, but he would have created a miserable life. But instead, he focused on his strong points, which was his mind and his uh, interest in science. And he obviously, he realized that he was good at science and good at phys physics. And so he, by focusing on that, instead of his problems, he focused on that. He became a very quite famous physicist and a very successful physicist, right? So it's a good example of being grateful for what you do have and being persistent and focusing your persistence where you are strong. We all have weak points, right? I'll never play in the NBA, right? Play professional basketball. No chance. I never would have. I'm too short. I'm too short, too small. Don't I'm not I doesn't I just don't have the the physical body to do it. So, this is something also that's important to realize that <coughs> sometimes we need to be really honest about our goals and and uh and ask ourselves, you know, I, you know, we all have limits. I, can I, is, this, is this an area where I truly am strong and have some ability or some potential, right? And we all have many areas in life where we have great potential. And we all have some areas in life where we don't, right? Like Michael Jordan probably could not have become a great famous f physicist. So, good points. Okay. Beverly Villabo, uh, Villa Lobos says, um, Hi, Jay. Nice to hear you live streaming from... Uh, I, can't, I can't tell which flag that is, but watching from Italy. Nice. Okay, May says, that's what I feel right now. So when I hear the topic, AJ Hooks talks about this life, I feel more comfortable, even though I know everybody will face difficulties in life. <coughs> huh? <laughs> it's all the flowers and everything in spring coming. So I'm sneezing a little bit. Sorry, guys. <laughs> uh Yeah, Vladislav, uh, again, with a good point. You should not just try and fail. You should think to change something. Right, you need to learn from your failures. Very important. Because if you just do a thing the same way, it's likely you'll fail again. This doesn't work. Exactly. Good point. So persistence works when you learn. You got. You keep trying something, but you also, after you fail, you need to ask, why did I fail? 
and then try something a little different. I'll give you an example from jujitsu because I love jujitsu. <laughs> and I, th I feel that often sports examples are very obvious, very clear. I don't know why. Sometimes when we talk about language or other things, people get confused. But if you compare it to sports, most people, oh, yeah, I understand. <clears throat> so I'm trying this new technique in jujitsu. It's an escape, right? Um, and I know it works because lots and lots and lots of people use it, different body types. I know it's a good escape, a good technique. But uh, so I kind of watched a video how to do it. And then I went and sparring and I tried to do it and I failed. I'm like, ah, I try, a, you know, I thought I was doing it correctly, but I try it. So then I do a next fight. I try it again. I try it again. I try it again. I keep trying it. And But afterwards, I, you know, after that day of practice, I walk home and I'm like, oh, why didn't it work? What was I doing wrong? And then, and then this, this is how, this is the important part. You've got to think about it. If you fail and then you just get depressed, you won't learn. You won't get better. If, if I could have just gone home kind of like in a bad mood and, and said, oh, it failed. It doesn't work. I'm not doing that again. Right. And then I never would learn. I would never improve. Right. Or I could just say, oh, I don't know, it failed. And then next time, try exactly the same thing again. And then it would fail again. And then try exactly the same thing again. And just keep doing it exactly the same and failing every time. And I would just always fail and never improve. Right. So I could quit and cry about my failing. Or you could just keep doing the same thing. Those do that doesn't work. But what you need to do is examine your failure. Look at it. And, and then think, well, what could I try differently? How could I improve? So this is what I would do. I'd walk home. And I think like, ah, oh, well, what's happening? This is the first question, a good question to ask when you fail. What happened? Like, what exactly happened? Right? Because sometimes we don't, we, we fail. That's very general. Why did you fail? So I think, why did I fail? Why wasn't it working? I know, you know, why wasn't it working? And I thought, well, maybe my arm position's wrong. Or maybe I'm doing it too slowly. Or I had some ideas. So I thought, all right, next time I'll try to go faster. And next time I'll try to, I'll change my arm position. And I went back and I tried both those things and still didn't work. <laughs> still failed again, 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 again. So I didn't quit though. I didn't, I didn't quit. I just thought, well, what am I doing wrong? And then sometimes what do we need to do? We need to get help. Sometimes you need help. Sometimes it helps to ask somebody who is better than us. You can do this by going, like I you go back and watch videos. Or if you actually know somebody, you can ask them. Luckily, I know somebody. I have an instructor. <laughs> so I asked my instructor. I said, I'm working on this. I watched the videos. It's not working. So then he said, okay, show me how you're doing it. And I tried it and it failed. And he said, oh, okay. I see what you're doing wrong, right? And then he showed me a couple points. He said, okay, you need to change. He did. Change your arm position a little more and then try this. And he gave me like two, three points to try. So then the next time, um, which was yesterday, I tried it again. Ta-da! It started working. started succeeding. Not perfectly, but definitely starting to work. I started feeling, ah, started feeling. And so now it's getting better, right? So what will I do? Next time I practice jujitsu, I'll keep trying that escape, that technique again. I'll try it again. <coughs> keep getting the feeling for it. And if I still have any little troubles, you know, I'll keep asking myself, okay, it's definitely much better now, but, you know, it's not quite perfect yet. So what can I do? And I'll keep trying and trying and trying. And if I need to, I'll ask him again. I'll ask my instructor or I'll watch some more videos. And gradually, I will get better and I'll get become very good at this escape. I know because I have used this same strategy to learn other techniques successfully. Right? So it's the same. This is the same process for anything, not just jujitsu, not just English, anything. Right? You've got to keep trying, keep trying, but you must examine your failures. Failing is fine. You're going to fail a lot. It's 100% normal. It's just you've got to learn from your failures. This is the key point. Just learn and then try something else next time. Try to, try to improve it. <laughs> Uzmanov Dilmurad says, I've been doing gardening while listening to your podcast. Uh, oh, to, to one of your podcasts named The Benefits of Fasting. We are fasting nowadays in Ramadan. Great. 
I always listen to your podcast. You help me a lot. Thanks. Yeah, all you guys who are fasting now for Ramadan, go find my old some of my old uh, podcasts because I have a few podcasts about fasting and the benefits of fasting. Maybe it'll give you that you know, extra good feeling about what you're doing. Happy fasting, everybody who's fasting now. Hindi says, one and a half years ago, I couldn't, could not make a simple conversation. Now I can speak English fluently and naturally. Thank you, AJ, for your Power English course and other courses. They are quite helpful. You are welcome and congratulations for your success. That's great. Okay. Miguel Zapata says, I have a native teacher, native English speaker, I guess. She always complains to me because I translate to English from Spanish when I speak English. She wants me to speak like a native, in a native way, living in a Spanish country. Well, that's unrealistic. <laughs> I mean... Look, maybe you will someday, but it takes a lot of time to get that level, right? It takes time. So um, yeah, a teacher to be pressuring you to do that and complaining, I think, uh, can you find another teacher? <laughs> Try to find a different teacher. Um, you're listening to my podcast in English, 100% English. Your you're writing in English is very good. It sounds like you're communicating in English, doing a great job. So you're doing great. Just keep improving. Right? Little by little, little by little, you improve, you improve, you improve. You cannot jump immediately thinking in English totally like a native speaker. That takes a lot of hours, right? So that's crazy that she's pressuring you and complaining like that. That you, I don't like it. I don't like it. This is, this is, my, this is why I don't like schools, you know? This, 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 this mentality, this mindset is so common. Making the students feel bad because they're not perfect. Of course you're not perfect. You're doing great. You're doing great. Don't worry about it. If you need to translate right now, if you're, of course, this is, you're going to do that for a while. It's going to take you a while, right? And then you're going to, then you'll start learning some phrases in English that will kind of pop out, right? Without translating. They'll just be natural. Not everything you say, just a few phrases or even just words. And then little by little, that it becomes more and more and more and more, okay? But it seems like you can communicate in English quite well. You should be happy about that. Okay, Sang Yogita Tiwari says, Life is uh, very fair with us. Sometimes if we don't learn from our mistakes, then time repeats those things again in our life to teach us and make us perfect in all situations to deal with. Well, indeed, this does tend to happen, right? That some things in life, if we avoid them, then they come back again, right? Until we figure them out. <laughs> this can happen. Someone's asking, am I sick? No, I've, um, it's... Uh, flower season in Japan, right? Sakura, the tree. So, you know, pollen is the stuff that comes out of flowers. It can cause, make you sneeze sometimes, right? I'm not sick. Yeah, Bilal says, focus on your strengths. Uh, and develop them. I think this is a, yeah, I think it's a very good point that it's it's good, it's fine to improve our weak points somewhat, you know, especially if they're causing us problems, right? If they're causing us a lot of problems, then we need to deal with them. But um, But in general, for success in something, the best strategy is usually to focus on our strong points 
yeah, you may need to improve your weak points a bit, but your most of your success will come from your strong points. Like again, we see this in in athletics, right? In sports a lot. If someone's um, very very tall, for example, well, probably that's a strong point for basketball. So probably riding a horse, like right, racing horses, is not a strong point. It's a very big weak point. So they're probably better to focus on the strong point. Do something where being tall is helpful if, if they want to do some kind of sport, right? Instead of crying, like, I can't ride horses professionally. Well, no, but you can be a basketball player. You might be able to be an American football player. You might be able to play soccer in some positions. So it's just good to focus on, you know, if you're... Uh, if you're an extrovert and you love talking to people, then use that. If you're an introvert, you love reading, use that. As you know, these can, they're both strong points if you use them correctly. Vladislav says, uh, the Russian singer Genia Lubich, I'm sure I'm saying the name wrong, has a song in English called Try Again. Oh, it's in English. You can find and listen to the song. She encourages you to try one more time. Yes. And Max Saylor, constant and never ending improvement. Right. That's, again, that's another Tony Robbins phrase, constant and never ending improvement. And the idea of that constant, and never ending improvement, it comes from a Japanese word, Kaizen. And the idea is you're always improving. But the important part of that idea is that the improvements are tiny. Each improvement is very, very, very small. So you don't try to suddenly make a huge, big improvement. Instead, the idea, the strategy is each day make a tiny little improvement. It's very, very tiny, right? So again, using my jujitsu example with that technique, I did not suddenly become a master of the technique, right? What did I do? Maybe I got a little better, but still failed. I failed the first time, totally failed. Uh, like nothing. I, I, I couldn't move. And maybe the next time I'm like, All right, I'll try something else. And I, I move a little bit, but still I cannot get out. An escape is when you get out. You get away from the other guy. I can't get away from him. He's still grabbing me. I'm like, ah, okay. But it was a tiny improvement. I still stuck. <laughs> it still failed overall, but... I did a little better. So that's still a tiny improvement, right? And then I try something else. And oh, I, I move a little more. I get I, a little bit better. Still failing, but not as bad, right? And then that's the idea. You keep doing that. And after a month or whatever, it depends on what you're trying to do, you will start to get maybe a small improvement. And this is what happened to me yesterday. I got out against some of the guys who are smaller than me. I did it. But against a guy who was much bigger than me, I got out mostly, but not completely. Kind of half success. But that's still much better than last week, right? And then I'll keep trying this week. <laughs> and I, you know, I'm very persistent now in jiu-jitsu. So I, if I want to, if I'm working on a technique, I will just keep doing it until I get decent, you know, until I can succeed and do it fairly well. And... For me in jiu-jitsu, that usually takes quite a long time. <laughs> uh, like I can't just do it in a few to uh, in one week. It, I usually need weeks and weeks and weeks, sometimes months and months and months for some things uh, until I can do them. And there's still things. There's some things I'm trying in jiu-jitsu six months later. I'm still not good. I'm better. I've had some small improvement, but I'm still not good compared to other people. Oh, well. Ilana Khan says, Hi, Jay. What would you recommend to a kid who failed again and again at some activity? Continue and try to overcome the failure or just drop it? This is a good question, too. Because some things, sometimes we, do, we should just quit. And I think Tony, in the beginning of this chapter, gives a nice, uh, he does, in, in a very short little thing, little phrase, I think he gives us the answer to that. It's, it's my answer. And uh, here's the key phrase. Decide what's most important to you. 
So this is where you have to ask the question, should I quit or should I keep trying and trying and trying and trying? Is this important to me? How important is it for my happiness, for my life? That's the key thing. So if it's something like, let's say, I'll give you an example for me, music. I've tried music a few times. Several times I've tried to learn to play guitar, bass guitar when I was a kid, trumpet, because I thought it'd be fun and cool, you know. <laughs> and uh, I finally quit and I just stopped trying because, uh, number one, I feel it's kind of a weak point. I do not have a natural music ability. And I asked myself, is this really important to me? Is music really important to me to play music? And I decided it's not, not at all. It sounds kind of, it seems cool. It'd be cool to play a guitar really well. But to do that requires, you know, a huge number of hours and several years of lots of practice. And I realized I really don't care about it enough to do that. I don't enjoy it that much doing it. I didn't care about it. It wasn't so important to me. And so if, if something's not so important and you don't really enjoy it, yeah, maybe just quit. It's fine to try a lot of things and you don't have to, you don't have to do everything, become a master at everything you try. And it's totally fine to try a lot of things and maybe most of them you quit eventually because you realize, eh, this is not really for me, right? That's probably most things. I think it's totally fine. And for kids, that's even more true. Kids need to try. They don't know. They're young. They don't have much experience in life. So, you know, maybe they try soccer. And maybe a lot of their friends play soccer. And soccer, maybe maybe they're Brazilian. <laughs> soccer is like a religion, right? It's crazy. Oh, soccer, soccer, soccer. So they try it, and but they're not good at it. And they try again and they fail. They try again, they fail. They try again, they fail. They try again and they fail for whatever reason. Um, well, then it's totally fine for that kid to ask, do I really like soccer? Am I really, do I really enjoy it? Is this really important to me in my life? Do I need this or really want it? If the answer is yes, for some reason, keep trying. Try again. But try something new. Try a different team. Try a different coach. Try different practice methods. Try a different position. On the other hand, maybe the answer is no. You know, honestly, I don't really even like soccer. <laughs> this was this happened to me with baseball as a kid. I played baseball as a kid uh, for several years as a, as a young, you know small kid, and it was fun, just fun, just liked it, just played it for fun. I was on a team and everything, great. I was pretty good at for my age, right? Meaning, you know, like you know, twelve years old, I was pretty good at baseball but not great. But then, you know, middle school came and uh, everything, you know, sports can, especially team sports, can become quite serious middle school, high school age, right, teenage years. Suddenly it's not just fun, right? They really care about winning and becomes very competitive. And uh, at that point, I realized I'm not that great at baseball. Like my skill, there were a lot of, at that point, some guys were training so seriously that uh, I wasn't so good anymore. I was maybe kind of below average at that point. And I thought, ah, oh, like, do I want to keep doing baseball? Is it, do I, am I enjoying it now? Not really. I wasn't enjoying it anymore. It was getting too serious. And I wasn't that good. And I didn't really care about it that much. It wasn't important to me to be great at baseball. So I just stopped playing baseball at that point. And I'm still happy I played when I was young. It was fun. So that's Ilana Khan. I can't give you the exact answer. I can only say that the child needs to, it's really up to the child. And you can help them with this decision uh, to figure out, is this important to me? Now, some things are quite important for us. Like uh, if you're, like I'll give you an ex another example from my life about money and financial freedom. For, I tried for 20, uh, 22 years. I was poor and very unhappy working jobs and trying to find an answer. I thought, first I thought that maybe there's some job out there in the world that I will like. 
<laughs> and I'll be happy. And there was not. <laughs> uh, working for someone else, meaning uh, I finally realized I can't, working for other people, I'm miserable. So then I tried to kind of do my own business, kind of selling some stuff. And then the first one failed. And then I finally I tried again, effortless English, and it succeeded. Okay. And I tried so many things. I lived in a car. I lived in a van. I tried so many things. I was super persistent for 20 years, over 20 years, trying to find a way to be financially independent, meaning not work a job. I hated jobs. So that one, I failed and failed and failed. It's a lot of failure, 22 years of failure <laughs> uh, and being unhappy. But I asked my question, is this important? Yes, it's important. Why is it important? Because I'm super unhappy. So I can't quit. If I quit, I'll just continue to be miserable and unhappy forever. I'm like, I'm not, I will not quit. If I will keep trying till the day I die because... Uh, I must try to be happier in this part of my life because this is such a big part of life. It was eating up too many hours of my life. That's why I hated it. Like, I don't like this. I have a lot of other things I want to do. <laughs> so persist. I tried for a very long time and failed and failed and failed and failed and failed until finally succeeding. So you see the difference, right? Between guitar, eh, I don't care really kind of fun but i but i failed so what it wasn't important uh, succeeding financially was very important and so i kept going for 22 plus years and uh, uh had massive persistence in that area huge amount of action and i just would not stop and sometimes i did feel depressed many times but i just would not quit <laughs> because <clears throat> it's just because of pain i didn't uh, the pain of failure was so big that i'm like i i can't fail i gotta keep trying yeah carlos freitas said i changed my life when i changed my way of thinking before i was afraid to be judged by people criticized but when I understood that it made me a slave in many spheres of life, I got the power to change. Well said. Sometimes the what makes us quit or what keeps us slaves, why we don't try something different, why we don't keep going, is this fear of other people's opinions. They'll criticize us. They'll think we're crazy. They'll think we're stupid. They'll think we're foolish. Carlos is exactly right. That means you're a slave to them. You're a slave to their opinion. You are suffering in your life. You're failing in your life. Why? Because of their opinion? Like, yeah, exactly. And when you realize that really deeply and you say, I don't care anymore, you become very powerful. Like, I, this happened to me. I don't know when it happened to me it, long ago. <laughs> I realized I don't care. Who cares what they think? I fa so what if I, I fail? People thought I was crazy. People did think I was crazy with some of the things I did. People thought I was crazy living in my car. They, a lot of people thought I was crazy. Why are you doing that? That's crazy. Is, aren't you uncomfortable? I mean, there, I mean, so many people, uh, they were just, I, I don't even know, crazy. They were just shocked <laughs> that I would live in a car. Why? Why? Because I don't want to pay rent. Why don't you want to pay rent? Because I don't want to work full time. I want more freedom. If I have an apartment, I have to pay rent. It's expensive. If I have expensive rent, then I have to work 40 hours a week just to pay my rent and the power and the electricity. If I live in my car, I can work 15 hours a week. And then I have a lot of time to relax and enjoy my life. So that's why I lived in my car. And a lot of people criticized it and uh, thought I was crazy. And who cares? It's my life. Arbia says, I'm 34. It's too late to start again. <laughs> You're crazy. I started at 38. I started my business at age 38. Older than you are. I think I was living in my car at that age when I decided to do it. Nah, you're... 34 is definitely not too late to start looking for, for a new career. <laughs> Funny. 34. Come on. 
You're young. You're young. You can change. I'm 54. I'm 54 and I'll try new stuff all the time. Right? In fact, this is sort of like a, a habit of mine in, uh, in life is every, uh, about every two years, two to three, something like that. Every two to three years, I try something totally different in my life. Uh, sometimes it's something more serious. It could be like a change of career. Now that I have my own company, I don't need to do that. So usually it's some hobby or sport. Like one year I just decided I'm going to try to learn golf. Why? Why not? <laughs> the reason was my dad plays golf and loves golf. And I thought, oh, I want to learn golf so I can play with my dad when I visit. That's all. So I learned to play golf badly, <laughs> but I learned I can play enough where I can go on a course and play, you know. Uh, and that was my only reason to do it. And it was totally new, very, very different. And uh, But why not? One year I learned to kite surf. I was living in Hawaii. I was in my 40s, 40-something years old. And most, and I just decided, well, this is like the kite surfing capital of the world. It's one of the best places in the world to kite surf. So I'm gonna, why not? I'm gonna learn. Let's learn. Let's try kite surfing. And I tried it, and I, oh uh, man, that was hard to learn. It was not easy. I failed and failed. It took me. I, I've told you, like, I've told this story before, but I can't remember now. But it was like almost 20 lessons until I could stand up and ride on top of the water by myself, right? With no one helping. Uh, so it was a lot of falling into the water at high speed. <laughs> it was a lot of that, a lot of crashing. and uh, But finally I did it and it was fun and yeah, it was really cool to do that. And one year I learned scuba diving. What's the next one? I don't know. I think right now it's just Japanese language for me. It's Japanese. I finally decided oh, I need to focus, like really focus on learning Japanese and stop playing around. Uh, Jiu-Jitsu. So, you know, a few years ago, I decided to try Jiu-Jitsu. I started doing Jiu-Jitsu at age 50, 51, age 51. Not common to start. Do, it's a hard sport. It's not easy. I'm the oldest guy at my gym. The oldest. <laughs> In fact, I was laughing just yesterday. We were training and one of the guys asked, he was, they were talking and one of the guys was saying, kind of saying something about, oh, yeah, it's hard. I'm older. I'm kind of getting old. So, um, you know, it's, it's, I, I need more energy. And I said, how old are you? And he said, 40. And I started laughing and I kind of joked. I said, oh, you're so young. You know, you're 14 years younger than me. Um, so don't, don't have this mindset. It's very dangerous, this idea. I'm too old to do something, especially you're in your 30s. Good Lord. Okay, but even if you're 60, it's crazy. You're so what? Look, we're here. We're in. We're, we're, we're living. We have this life as a gift. Okay, and if you believe, and I believe, we're here for a reason, for a purpose, then we should use every minute we have here. And then we die, and, you know, what happens after that happens. But um, while we're here, don't waste it. Don't waste this great beautiful opportunity and so keep learning keep trying keep doing new things it doesn't matter your age if i don't care if you're 70 you can learn a new language if you're 70 you can try a new sport you can change your career or your job you can do all of that you can keep learning and you should you know i think absolutely keep living keep living don't reach people reach some age they just have some number in their mind Right. And everyone has a different number, a different idea. For some people, it's like this guy's 34. He says, good Lord, come on. That's so young. <laughs> that's crazy. Right. But some people say 40, 50, 60, whatever, 70. There's some number in their head and they think after that, then I stop living. I stop learning. I can't change my life. Everything that right. The past equals the future. Right. I'm stuck. Wrong, 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 wrong. Even if you have one more year to live, if you're 90 years old, use it for something that's important to you. Hey, Ibrahim Ali, good to see you. Good morning, he says. Great to see you. And always good to see you. Always, always, always. Omar says kite surfing. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I could still do it now. It's been a, quite a many years, but it was fun. Yeah, cool. Uzmanov Dilmarad says, MMA fighters, mixed martial arts, encourage me 
encourage you to to achieve your goal. They train hard for three or four months and fight. After that, they go on holiday. I think we want to achieve something. We have to try hard for a while. Yeah, right? And you need rest. There, there You do, right, there needs to be some balance. If you're going hard, 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 you need a rest period then. And, you know, weightlifters do this too. Power lifters, people who are really serious into weightlifting. Um, they don't just lift maximum every single day, right? Because it'll destroy their body, right? So they, they kind of go up, go up, harder, harder, harder. They have a competition where they lift the most amount, right? Their maximum, they try. And then after that, they drop down and they go easy, lighter weights for a while, right? And there's many systems for this, but the point is that rest is also part of this. Okay, let's see. I'll have some I'm having a problem. I cannot place an order on your VIP membership 10 day trial. Do you have a support email? Yeah, I'll, I'll put the support email here in the comments. It's members at effortlessenglish.org. Dot O-R-G. And it's just effortless English, so members at effortlessenglish.org. So it's different than what people expect sometimes. Okay. Yeah, like Vladislav says, my grandfather gave up after the age of 80. My dad offered to help him exercise. He decided he was too old. Now he's 83. He's so weak. He walks hardly at all. He's weak and sick after three days, three years of being lazy. It doesn't take long. <laughs> and this is at any age. Uh, now, the good news is he could still turn it around. And yeah, we all die. So of course we all die. He's going to die someday. I will. You will. But until then, keep moving. Keep moving. Keep moving as best you can. And maybe you're 80. You can't do what you did when you were 20, right? But you can do something. You can go for a walk. You can lift weights. Maybe they're lighter weights, but you can still lift weights of some kind. You could try to do push-ups, even if you're on your knees instead of full push-ups. So you, you got to keep, this is true for your body and your mind. Keep using it. Keep living. This is the, the main point is keep living as long as you're alive. Don't quit, right? We're going to die. And when that happens, then we go on to the next thing. But until then, keep living this life as every minute and second you can. Because eventually it does end. But don't end it before it really ends, you know? So many people just go, stop. Um... It's, it's crazy. I mean, it, 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 you'll just enjoy it more, at least. I mean, if you need some motivation, I, I won't even give you some big, deep philosophical, spiritual reason. I think there are some spiritual reasons for this. But a very practical reason is that it's more enjoyable to keep living, to stay active with your mind and your body, to try new things, even whatever your age. It's more interesting. It's more fun. Your life will be happier. That's a very simple motivation, <laughs> a very basic motivation, and uh, and it's true, right? I mean, like, ah, there's so many people my age, like 54, and they just sit around watching TV all day. They go to work, maybe come home, watch TV. They don't do anything new. They never try anything new. It's boring, man, boring. I couldn't live like that. I can't live like that, and you shouldn't li live like that either if you want to be happy. Push yourself to try things. Push yourself. Do something new. And this is this is different than the topic for today's chapter, but I, I think it's a good, important point. Try something totally new and weird. Something very different. Something that you would think you'd never do, right? Like kite surfing for me was totally different. I had never done any surfing, skateboard, nothing like that. And I just thought, I'm going to try it. Why not? And after that, when we, we moved to Japan... I tried snowboarding because it's kind of similar skill. Snowboarding was was uh, is actually easier than kite surfing. So um, we don't live where it snows, so I can I only did it a few times. But again, totally new. 
And at that age, again, that was late, my late 40s. I tried jiu- Again, I started, jiu- not just tried jujitsu, I loved jujitsu. So I started jujitsu at age uh, 51. And uh, I am still doing it. And I plan to do it until my body breaks, <laughs> until my body can't do it anymore. As long as I can. I don't know when that will happen. I know it'll happen some point. But uh, as long as my body can handle it, I will continue to do jujitsu. And probably after I focus on Japanese for a few years, I'll probably do something else. Try some, who knows what? I don't know. Just try something different. Cool. Abdel Hamid says, Mr. Hug, my forte is creating short stories in English, horror and drama. Cool. My dream is to switch them into movies. Also cool. I'm from Morocco, and without doubt, the USA is the right place for such industries. Yes and no, because uh, I think that you know Hollywood is dying, thank God. And uh, I think the movie industry, because of technology now, that it's becoming possible for people to make movies cheaper and cheaper and cheaper, and lots of more small independent movies, and it's becoming much more spread out, not just controlled by Hollywood only, right? But but uh, different countries, different places. And so you could learn to make movies using video uh, quite cheaply and very independently. And yeah, your first few movies probably will be terrible. They'll probably suck because you, you're, you're just learning. That's fine. But uh, you've got your own stories. So then you write, you change your, have your short stories, make them into movie scripts, right? Change them into movie scripts. And then just direct your own movies. Get a get a video camera and a computer so you can edit the video and maybe get some friends or find some actors somewhere. Actors are cheap or free. Lots of act people out there happy to do some acting for free if they can get in a movie, <laughs> even a little tiny independent one. So uh, start doing that. There's some cool stories about people who've done this um, very, 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 very cheaply. Um What's his name? Rodriguez? What's that guy's name? He's a very famous Mexican director uh, who then he made a very, movie very, 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 very cheaply with video. Uh, why am I forgetting the name of the movie? El, Mar- El Mariachi. El Mariachi. Now, later he made the movie again with Antonio Banderas with a big budget. But the original one was so super, 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 super low budget uh, that he made, uh, I think, in Mexico. And uh, it, it became successful. It made some money. I mean, not like Star Wars, right? But it was made some money. And then he could make another movie. And now he's kind of like, you know, a fairly successful director. Uh, so good luck. All right, I'll take a couple more and then time to go. Cristiano says, yes, AJ football is a national passion in Brazil. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't, unfortunately, I don't know. My, I mean, you know, I kind of know football, soccer, as we call it. Um, but uh, the Brazilian sport that I'm connected to is Brazilian jiu-jitsu. So I know for most people, soccer is the bigger one for Brazil. Brazil is super famous for soccer. But um, people who do jiu-jitsu, Brazil is also very famous for jiu-jitsu, for good reason. Best podcast. People think when they are 30 or 40 years age, they still can go to college to find a job. Sure, why not? Go to college if you're 50. You can go back to school. I wouldn't recommend. I don't recommend college in general, but um, you can certainly do it if you want to. And you definitely can change jobs, right? You change, and not just jobs, change careers. You could do something totally different. I mean, I did that in my, th- you know, I, I don't know, like I was, how old was I? Well, my first teaching job was age 27, 28, teaching English. But I didn't really do it seriously until I was in my 30s. I didn't change, I was a social worker. So, and then at age 38, I became an entrepreneur, right? I started my own business. So age 38, that was a big change. 
I had to learn business and all this stuff. Um, so yeah, you can change it anytime. Just like, you know, you can learn languages. Uh, he is, I, I always use Steve Kaufman as an example. He's such a great example that he's in his, I think he's 70 now, something like that. And he's still learning new languages all the time. All right, I'll do one more and then time to go. Oh, by the way, before I, I take the last question, we're still doing our challenge, our speaking challenge I mentioned. It begins April 20th officially. And now people are, a lot of people have already put their day one videos on the Gab site. Right? Our, our uh, group, our Gab group on social media. Right, so just to join the challenge, you just uh, the first step is put your video on Gab, the Gab group. So two minutes or less, just talking in English. If your if your speaking is not good, doesn't matter. It's okay. It's okay. My Japanese speaking also is bad, and yet I put my video on there. I was the first one. <laughs> All right, so. Put your video on there and join us in this challenge. It's going to be great. And the challenge, it's a conversation challenge. The goal, uh, speak English as much as possible to other people. So not just alone to a mirror. That's okay, but we're really focused on speaking to other people. And of course, improve our conversation ability in three months. So you'll, you'll, make, a, you'll make a new video in... Uh, you know, after the month one, you'll make an, another video after two months. And then the final video, all of us will make our final video after three months. And we can compare day one video and uh, three month video. We should see some improvement. <laughs> Hopefully a lot of improvement. Okay. All right. I guess I'll take this last one. Why not? This is okay. H A. Uh, where did it go? Kuder Abbas says, "What about someone? Oh, someone who's retired, over age sixty-five. What advice do you give us?" Same advice. If you're retired and you have a you know an income where you don't need a job, man, that's great because now. You have so much free time. So what happens when people retire? What, what, do, what, have, what have I seen? <laughs> what have I noticed <laughs> with people who have retired? At least I'm talking about Americans, right? So a lot of people sort of don't, they, they become kind of lazy and depressed. Not everybody, but some, but a lo a good number. A lot of people who retire, they they're working uh, their whole life, sixty five, something like that, sixty seven. They retire, they stop working, and then they're just home all day, and they just sit around, they watch TV, maybe play golf sometime, maybe not, and they don't do much. They don't challenge their mind anymore. They don't challenge their bodies much anymore. And they just, their energy starts dropping, dropping, dropping. And you actually find statistics about this that quite a large percentage of people die just a few years after retiring. It's kind of sad, right? And, and a lot of people just seem like they're not so happy there. They kind of stop living. So that's the negative path. Don't go that way. That's the dark side. <laughs> all right. The other path is that you've got all this free time. Well, you need to find new things to do because when you were working, you were using that time at work. You were going to work. It's a lot of time. If you work full time, it's eight hours a day plus, you know, to get there takes time, maybe an hour to get there, an hour to come back. So it's like 10 hours a day. Suddenly, you're not doing that. You have 10 extra hours a day. What are you going to do? And you got hopefully, you know, some energy, more energy too. 
So that's great, but it can it can be a, a problem in the beginning. I had this problem when I first started my business. After maybe a year, I quit my job. I quit, well, actually about six months, I quit my job. And then I was working on the business, but much less than my job. I suddenly had all this free time. And yeah, in the beginning, I'm, I just was, I did kind of just enjoy being lazy for a few months, right? But then I started getting bored. It's <coughs> like, so, well, I need to do something. I don't want to just sit around in coffee shops doing nothing. Um, and so that's when I started trying all these new things. And so that's what I would say if you're over 65 and you're retired, you see the opportunity and use the opportunity. So you've got to try things. Try, try, try. Just get out there and try lots and lots and lots of new things, new hobbies, uh, learn languages. Maybe you know, you're learning English. You could also try some other languages too. Uh, you can try physical activity. Stay active physically. This is part of my advice is that you should uh, keep moving your body for sure. So find some sports or physical activities. It might just be walking and hiking, right? But I've met a lot of people retired. Like when I was in Nepal, we were hiking in the mountains and... Uh, we, we, we met a few groups of people who are retired and they're on these big, long hiking trips all through the Himalayan mountains, right? So you could do that. You could try new sports. You could try tennis, golf, jujitsu, <laughs> um, whatever, anything. Uh, swimming, triathlons, weightlifting, gymnastics, calisthenics, on and on and on. There's so many things you could try. So I would say do physical things so that can take up a couple hours every day you have the time you're retired you've got the time now you you, you don't have to exercise super hard but you could go for a two-hour walk every single day if you want to or two and a half hours three hours and while walking you could be listening to language <laughs> language uh learning right english podcast lessons or maybe other languages too You've got an, if you're retired, you got enough time. You can learn two languages at the same time. You could travel if you've got the money. Uh, even if you don't have much money, you could travel locally and just in your own country around your, you know, even within your town, you could go for long walks. Um, you could try new skills. You could even try starting a little small business if you feel like doing a little work. Still, you could try to start a little small business. Don't don't risk much money but you could try something that doesn't need much money there's so many things you could do right all righty then all right guys lots of love to you hope you enjoyed uh today's chapter i will be uh busy the next few days so no shows for the next few days but hopefully uh maybe next weekend so we probably have about a week i'll, I'll be uh, a little bit busy with some stuff with my family. And then after that, uh, should be back. Hopefully be back. Okay. Lots of love to you. Join our challenge. So get over to our Gab group and make your video and, and let's get talking in English. And join my VIP program at EffortlessEnglishClub.com. If you have any problems, you know, email uh, on our website. You can just see contact and you could say, hey, I'm having a problem with the website and let me, let me if, and we'll help you. Definitely try the VIP program, EffortlessEnglishClub.com. Let's love and see you again.